Oh, hi. Okay, so today we're going to be going over Chapter 7. And this is David, and this other person here is... This is Allie. Okay, and she'll try to be a little bit louder the next time. Or this time. Okay. So, let's get right into it. Um, so, in this chapter, a quick recap. Uh, why don't you do the recap? Oh, actually, I'll do the recap. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, basically, what happened is Peta and... Cadmus had their first fight, and they spent some of the time, uh, three days training inside the training center, and getting honing their skills and pretending to be a good couple like sociopaths would. Okay, so anyway, I don't know if I should start off with the most badass moment, but I think we should. Why don't you tell, you know, them what happened with the whole shooting and arrow thing? Do you I don't really remember. You should tell because you remember in more detail. You should tell them all about. Okay, well, basically this will happen, you know, basically three days goes by, and, you know, they do, like, minor training, or they do training, or whatever, with other tributes, but then on the third day, they do private training to kind of show off their skills to the game makers, and the last day, since she's District 12, she's the last person to go, literally, the boys go first and girls, so she's the last person, and no one was paying attention to her, like, there was a very select few, and, you know, this is something I definitely want to see done in this movie. Uh, you know, she takes her a bow and arrow. She starts getting practice. She misses the target a few times. She's getting used to it. Then she finally hits the target right through the heart. Goes through the heart of the dummy. Goes through the uh, the sandbag right behind it. Cuts out all the sand. Then she does uh, again. And, you know, she looks at for praise. And um, there's some praise. And um, then she does it. Uh, and she hits a light. And it, like you know, makes sparks go everywhere, and it was supposed to be, it was really fancy, and then the next arrow she does, you know, she knows that no one's paying attention, and she's you know, like, fuck these people, so she takes an arrow, and she points it right at the game makers, and keep in mind, they're like, they're like in a separate area, you know, having dinner and everything, she takes an arrow, points it at the game makers, and releases it, and it goes right through a pig's apple, like the apple that they put in a pig's mouth, goes right through, and she's like, thanks for the consideration, and she just walks off, and everyone's just dead silent. I thought that was so fucking badass. What did you think of that? That was pretty cool. Um, I was surprised she actually risked doing that. Yeah, because, you know, that's pretty much kind of like saying, hey, you know, that's endangering someone's life. So, you know. Anyway, yeah, I'm surprised, you know, if you think about it, that they would let tributes kind of just train with long-range weapons, you know, right in front of game makers. I mean, it's not every tribute's going to be... Boyle. I mean, maybe some tributes may be like, hey, I have nothing to lose. Fuck it, I'm going to go kill some, you know, capitals, pigs. Literally. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so we learned that Katniss is actually pretty good. And she's not such a noob as she, 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 you know, she made herself sound like she was like mediocre, you know. But apparently, she's actually really good. She always gets like, a headshot but always hits through the eyes whenever she hunts with a bow and arrow and that's not an easy task to always hit the eye of a squirrel every time you launch an arrow or whatever so that's pretty impressive what do you think of that um i've done that before i mean it's it's pretty easy i don't know she must be kind of a noob no i'm just kidding yeah that's pretty cool she definitely underestimates herself kind of like a lot of girls i know ah uh, so anyway and it's funny because pete is the one that actually brought it out you know you know, I was saying earlier, you know, not to brag or anything, but, you know, I was saying earlier, you know, she should give herself some more credit because, you know, she's actually doing a lot. You know what you say? You know, she's actually, you know, contributing to the hub and, you know, letting people actually have meals to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, she traded food for other people with other people and actually, you know, she's actually doing a lot, benefiting a lot of people with her hunting but she always underrated herself and i was kind of pissed and Peta actually stands up for her and says hey bitch you need to understand yourself so anyway before we get into that let's talk about how she secretly loves her mom why don't you go ahead and explain that <laughs> okay well she doesn't like um getting help from her mom but she does think about her mom when she is um, she's taking away, and she's in the train. She sometimes thinks of Prim and her mom, and how they react to everything, right? So she's not, I guess, completely full of hate. Disappointing. 
Yes, and that was very disappointing. <sighs> okay, so anyway, yeah, I was wondering, you know, how they're doing now. The pro- I, I'm probably about to see actually the reaction in the movie, you know. <clears throat> All right. Um. Okay, so let's talk about how completely irrational Katniss is. So Katniss is, you know, and you know, Peter is like, and now if someone said this to you, you know, I want you to ask yourself, is this an insult? And this, this is what he says. He's like, you know what? You have no idea how much an effect you can have. Uh, you know. And before that, he was talking about how, you know, she's so good at everything and how she underrates herself. And then he's like, you know, you have no idea what kind of effect you can have. And you know what she does in her head? What kind of effect I even have? What does that mean? Oh, well, uh, he's obviously trying to insult me. I mean, let me think about it. I mean, I don't rely on anybody. Do I rely on anybody? No, I'm actually, oh, I don't, I, I have to help my whole family. And she goes on this giant paragraph rant on her head that has nothing to do with what he said. It has to do with a little bit that she goes off into how she doesn't rely on people and how all this other shit and how, oh, did, did everyone just kind of pity me? Is that why they helped me? You know, in the hob and all this shit. And all he said was, you know, basically he said, hey, you should give yourself more credit. And she starts going off about how she doesn't need help from anybody or something like that. Like, what the fuck? Like, you know, she's just so stupid. She's a typical 16-year-old girl. I don't give a shit. She had a shitty background. You know, whatever. What do you think? That's so sad that she reacted that way. It was really sweet of Peter to tell his competitor that she's really good. And she reacted, oh, he's trying to insult me. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And, you know, I don't think Peter really considers her a competitor. I really kind of think that he wants to be there for her because, you know, he's never shown any signs of competition towards her. You know, he's always been kind of like holding her, holding her hand, you know, been trying to be there for her, you know, telling him, telling her his feelings and stuff, inviting her on the route. You know, like he's actually been there for her. I think he definitely got a boner for her. And, you know, it's funny, you know, she, this is kind of, I don't know if it's foreshadowing, but, you know, she's kind of like, oh, wow, I've actually been paying attention. Because you know, while, you know, Peter's like, you know, you're actually really good. You get headshots all the time. You know, you, you do a lot of good. And as she's like, well, you know, you're good, too. You know, you can lift 100 bags of flour, you know, pretty easily. And he's like, yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of 100 bags of flour just sitting around in the Hunger Games that I can go pick up and throw. And, uh, you know, that's pretty funny, but... And I think it's funny that she actually starts, you know, noticing, you know, says things that, you know, like, oh, yeah, he came in second place in the wrestling tournament, and he's this, and he's strong, and he's, you know, a man. And I think it's hysterical how, and she's like, oh, maybe I am paying attention to this guy. So she's obviously a whore for Gail and for Peta. You know, obviously she wants to have a threesome. Okay, so let's go ahead. Well, what do you think of that? Well, I don't know specifically. But um, let's talk about something else. Um, so you know that a lot happened in this chapter, surprisingly. But some badass things happened. Um, <laughs> I'm just scrolling down, looking for things. Okay, okay. So let's talk about Peta, my my knight in shining armor. Um, so he's actually pretty good in hand to hand combat, and he's actually pretty strong. Apparently, he's not just like some baker boy. And um. <laughs> uh, did you really write that? Strong like a sexy octopus who throws things around. <laughs> an oh, an octopus, as you know. Um, so here's something that's interesting about him. Well, then they actually might be a little insecure. And we, I talked about how he was a little jealous of Gale, but um, he knows pretty sad. Uh, you know, at, when Peta and Katniss had their first argument. You know, we find out that he was kind of his mom's bitch. You know, we already knew that his mom was a bitch. But, um, you know, she you know, she said this to her son, who was going to go compete and die. She was like, you know, maybe we'll have a winner this year. And she was talking about Katniss. She was like, yeah, maybe Katniss will win this year. Maybe we'll actually have a good winner this year. Right in front of her son that, you know, is going to go basically compete and like, die. And you know, instead of trying to comf- comfort him, she's like, well, at least we'll have a good winner. You know, that's pretty fucked up. And, you know, I love how Katniss, you know, just kind of was like, oh. Yeah, I can see the pain in his eyes, but but I'm gonna insult him. <laughs> That's terrible. And if Katniss can see the pain in his eyes, that means there must be a lot of pain because she doesn't even understand her own feelings. Yeah, most people that can't understand their own feelings can somehow see other people's feelings. It doesn't make any sense. 
Um, so another thing, funny thing that happens is, you know, it's, they're basically fighting over, you know, who's better, and they're all, all like complimenting each other. It's like, no, you're awesome. No, no, you're awesome. That's so cute. I know it is very cute. Um, so it's kind of funny, but they both, you know, it's funny because you know Katniss thinks that Peter never knew about her, and you know, or he, you know, he never, you know, knew about her or whatever, and. But I guess he does remember that day with the bread and everything because she was like, you know, it's only because someone helped me out. And then he looks at the bread and he looks at her and she's like, oh, shit, he remembers that day. What do you, what do you think of that? Of course he remembers. I mean, he got slapped by his mom, right, for giving her the bread. So, of course, he remembers. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's really funny. I She's like, well, it's because someone helps me out and it was you. Yeah, I know. She obviously kind of has a be- secret boner for Peter. So anyway, you know, something interesting that happens, I think is kind of foreshadowing with Peter, is that he has Lee Hacks. Um, you know, he's really good with the camouflage. Like, it says that, you know, he knew exactly how to set it up so, you know, it could catch the morning rise color and everything. And she was kind of looking at this, like, how does he know that? You know, he's, he's just a beggar son. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested. And I'm thinking maybe Peter would, like, secretly, like, snuck out and, like, watched her in the woods or something like that. Or who knows why, you know, because... Watch Katniss naked in the woods. Oh, I don't know. She was probably really hairy. It was probably a, a, a challenge, like watching the human centipede. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that's interesting. Like how he's so good at camouflage. He's actually pretty good. I don't know if he's so good at traps or something like that too. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and talk about the next thing. I don't know what the next thing is. There's so many things that happen. Not really. Okay, so. We learned that um, District 1, District 2, and District 4 are the ones that have the volunteer tributes called career tributes, or that's what they're called in District 12 anyway. And they're, they kind of like look so high on themselves, like they look down on other tributes and like, oh yeah, we don't even consider you a challenge. Like they sit by themselves at the cool kid table and they eat, and they eat food. And I think that's funny, and I hope Katniss shows them up, and so does PETA, because, you know, they're all snotty. Ugh, that's fine. And it's funny because if I remember correctly... Oh, no, never mind. I couldn't remember if Rue that we learned about comes from district, one of these districts or not, but no. Um, and I don't remember if it said girls volunteer because it, it just talks about boys. But who knows? Um, so anyway, uh, we should talk about Rue. It seems like a pretty important character, but let's keep going and just do this in no logical order. Um, so the game makers, I don't know if anyone knows about them, but basically, they're, I don't know what else their purpose is, and I'm, I don't know if they actually made the Hunger Games, but they basically observe the training, um, after three days, and then, like I said, they, they observe them privately, and then they give them some kind of score, or something like that, and they, you know, rate them on a scale of 1 to 10, or 11, or 12, 12, yes, 1 to 12, so, that's pretty interesting. Um, so... I think that's funny. Anyway, um, I think that they're probably going to score her a high score for that. I think they're going to give her like, you know, probably like a 10. And, you know, they're probably going to give Peter like an, like a, you know, like an average score. And then like, you know, everyone else is going to get really good. I think that Katniss is going to score really high though and she's going to be surprised. What did Peter do, by the way? Do you remember? Well, that's not in this chapter. I did read the next chapter because I was impatient. But I won't spoil anything for myself. Um... <laughs> So, and then also the training center, uh, it basically just has a bunch of places, you know, that you can do. They have, like, field weapons and, you know, uh, you know, swords and everything and traps and, you know, there's apparently, like, little stations and some stations, like, never get, you know, you never go to, like, how to tie a knot and everything. Everyone's usually at the cut, you know, using the sword thing. And that was pretty funny. It said that the person out there was, like, getting really excited that someone came to their booth or whatever. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that mar- marvelous input. Okay, so the next thing is basically Wu. Oh, you didn't write it down. You didn't color code it. It's okay. Okay, so yes, Wu is a girl that basically just like Prim. She's even named after a flower. That's like Prim. And I really think that they're gonna uh for uh they're gonna get together because. You know, Rue is always following around. I guarantee you that 
Katniss and Peeta are going to be like, you know, basically chilling and maybe set up a trap and then Rue's going to fall into it and instead of killing the, her, they're going to like put her part of her team. Who knows? Maybe Rue will betray them and they'll be forced to kill them and then who knows? I don't know. I, I'm just going to, I love how you're not even letting me see your reaction because you think I might be right. Okay. Anyway, so I think that's probably going to happen. I definitely think that Rue's clearly going to die. Because, you know, whenever you have a cute character that's really good for the main character and there's always some kind of feelings, it's like basically saying, hey, we're going to give you this cute little character that we're going to sacrifice later to make the book seem more darker than it really is. Ah, uh, yeah. So anyway, those are my predictions for now. But, uh, you know, yeah. Um, what do you think? Um, I think I see more of how irrational Katniss is. And how sweet Peta is, and how um, she just kill herself basically because she is not being very nice to him. Yeah, no, Peta deserves a lot more. What do you think about what? I, I, weren't you going to tell me about y- your your theory with Peta and Gail? Oh well, oh well, clearly, clearly, probably the reason Gail wanted to run away with Katniss is so that he could get her in trouble. And uh, have Gail all to himself. No, 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 I have Peta all to himself. Gail and Peta would make a good team. Yeah, Gail and Peta all the way. We should make a t-shirt and wear it. No, no. (laughs) You know, they're probably both fed up with Katniss by now. And they're like, fuck girls. We're going to go with guys. Guys know what guys want. We can just hang out, be guys together. I know. That's going to be hot. So I can't wait to see that. You know, it's funny. I saw a picture. This may be a spoiler. I saw a picture of Katniss, Peta, and some other dude, and it looked like they were like in the woods. I didn't know if that was Gale, if that was some other dude they team up with. So I'm interested to see some other things. So god damn it, I need to review these last two chapters so I can read the fucking Hunger Games. Okay, the real story. So anyway, bye. <laughs>